Hello, my name is Halkri, and welcome back to the All Lords tutorial series. Today we're going to be tackling the Crimson Mirelands. Now, as a correction to the previous video, I did say I would show um, where you could evolve a potential Cascoon, uh, but I forgot I'd already passed that when I had saved the file I was working on. So, um, it would be it'd be after you've left Obsidian Fieldlands um, when the game is introducing Wisps to you. So the first thing you're going to see whenever you uh, wake up on this next day is they're going to have a little bit of a cutscene with Arizu and uh, you're going to be tasked with going up to the commander's office. Just for the sake of the video, I've already watched that. <clears throat> and this is the point right after that would have happened. So uh, without further ado, first thing you want to do is talk to Ginter, this left salesman. He has random items for sale and some of them are extremely good. Uh, in my document linked below, I will list all the items that are good and you should buy from Ginter. Uh, I actually got a very good selection. I got a Pokeball set, which is 30 Pokeballs for half of the cost of buying the materials to make them yourself, or half of the cost of buying them from the Security Core guy. And then a Stealth Spray set, which is half the cost of buying the materials yourself and crafting it. However, just for the sake of the video, for the sake of demonstration, I will not be buying the Stealth Spray set Instead, I'll be buying the materials from this uh, from Thule. Now, on top of what I'm buying right here, 11 bug warts, uh, 12 total. I picked up one on the first day. And then four hope berries. No matter what you buy, make sure you have a ratio of three bug warts for every one hope berry, because the recipe for a stealth spray is one hopo, three bug wart. On top of what you're seeing me buy here, total of four hope berries and 12 bug warts, I would recommend also buying, if you can afford it, 11 orange berries because <laughs> I forgot and I got punished for it and I had to use some berries I would have rather kept. That's okay. So we're gonna go up to uh, commander's office. And then we're gonna warp to the front gate after all that cutscene's over. And uh, make sure you have shanks right now. Uh, you should have already had Shinx uh, at the end of the last video when we did party management in Obsidian Fieldlands before we left. Um, you should have Shinx in your party. Uh, it's very important because if you you may have noticed if you were checking your decks at any point during Obsidian Fieldlands that Shinx's research is not done yet. Shinx's research will hopefully uh, get done through these battles. Uh, all Shinx needs is three quick attacks, which depending on how much these things like to troll should be very easy. It could be very easy. Like, uh, I actually got trolled very, very, very hard during this Mime Junior fight, so I had plenty of time for quick attacks. Yeah, the Mime Junior can Zen Headbutt turn one, like it did right there, but it missed. It's either 90 or 95 accuracy, so the fact that it missed was impressive. And because it missed, I get to do two quick attacks in a row. Unpunished. And then I think it goes for Hypnosis. Yeah. And then I get another turn. And I did not hit. And then he goes for Iron Defense. And then I get my third Quick Attack. And I'm already done with Quick Attacks. But we still got one more fight to lose coming up, so I gotta keep Shinx. Which, uh, that's fine, you know. Not ideal, but it's alright. Alright, so after that, you go to the Crimson Mirelands. A little bit of cuts in here at the beginning. I forgot to start my timer on the top right. It'll get started eventually. All right, so first thing you want to do is come over here to the crafting table and you want to craft max stealth sprays, max revives, or ma the maximum number of revives. You cannot craft max revives yet. Uh, and then craft as many heavy balls as you can. And then uh, head to the storage and store, um, store the potions, the apricorns, um, actually, first you want to sort like that, and then you want to store potions, super potions, apricorns, uh, tumblestone, iron, vivichokes, anything between, uh, besides the potions, anything between stealth spray and pokeball you want to store because you don't really need any of this stuff in your inventory and everything that you'd want is conveniently like before stealth spray or after pokeball. So everything between Stealth Spray and Pokeball, get rid of. 
and then sort again. It's very important to continuously sort your inventory because in a situation where you're catching multiple Pokemon back to back to back, um, if there's any gaps in your inventory and you throw a Pokeball and catch something and you're like charging a Pokeball to throw at another Pokemon and an item gets picked up from that first Pokemon you caught, the game will shift your inventory one way and then your the item you're holding in your hand could suddenly change into something that's not a Pokeball that could, you know, anger the Pokemon that you're trying to catch. So it's very, very dangerous. So every time you open up the menu or make any changes to your inventory, make sure you're always sorting. It's just minus. Just make that part of your muscle memory of opening up the menu. All right, then we're going to come over here. And uh, we're going to run to the Celestion Ruins for our next sack fight. A little bit of cutscenes here. So Shinx should always be thicker, faster than Togepi. Um, it is possible to get outsped. You have to be like level two or level three in minus speed or probably zero EL as well. Um, but it's not too bad. Togepi can go for Calm Mind there, which does give you potentially two quick attacks. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, you're still, you're always wanting quick attacks. So it's not that big, big a deal. Unless you're me today, where <laughs> I had that massive troll on mine, Junior. All right, so after that Volo cutscene, we're going to warp back to the Mirelands camp. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and just buy some Pokeballs. I recommend buying uh, at least 20 if you did not get the Pokeball set, because um, that should cover you for uh, the rest of this area. If, maybe maybe buy 30 if you're not feeling comfortable. Also, feel free to sell some of the things I'm telling you to deposit, like the potions. I wouldn't sell the super potions because those could be helpful later. Um, any Stardust you may have collected from ores, make sure you sell those things and uh, use them to your advantage. And then we're gonna withdraw our team. Uh, the only Pokemon here in this pasture that we don't need is Luxio. So you're gonna see me put Luxio in B Barrel slot and then mass drag B Barrel, Starly, and the Geodudes into the party. As soon as I figure out that's what I wanna do. All right, we're gonna leave our last slot open intentionally because there's not really anything else I wanna bring. And then, uh, yeah, if you have two spoiled Apricorns, you should go ahead and use them on Carnivine and try to get a Carnivine. This will make the Ursuluna fight really, really easy. And from here, we're going to be going up here uh, to this area you're not supposed to be to be at um, because there's two leaf piles up here, which have a very high chance of dropping spoiled Apricorns to replace the ones that we just used. And, to, you know, just give us like an extra buffer to work with because never there's nothing wrong with having too many stun items. So, um... It's kind of tough, but if you just do it a little bit like this, just, you know, play with it and see what, what you're comfortable with. It's not too difficult to learn as long as you just follow that walking path that I just did. It might take a couple tries, but it's worth it for this for the split apricorns, horns, at least early on when you're new. And then this tree right here is a raspberry tree. Raspberries are broken, so you want to make sure you harvest that. And then you want to be leading Shinx going into this battle. So you're going to be challenged by Bandit Coin, and Bandit Coin has a Toxic Oak. Uh, things really just can't catch a break. Um, yeah, Shinx is going to die again. <laughs> this makes it safe for your uh, Staravia to switch in. It is possible to lead this fight with Staravia, tank the Venoshock, and then do your attacks. But if you, you're risking getting crit. So leading Shinx is the only completely 100% safe way to do this. And now when Stravia comes in, you can just do your attacks normally. You'll need to do Agile Air, Air Lace into regular Air, Air Lace. And if the Starlies you evolved are male and female, so you have currently somewhere one male Stravia and one female Stravia, these Air Laces are all you will need to do for Stravia. However, if you evolved two of the same gender, you'll need to use one more aerial ace and you'll need to kill a carnivine or something. Because I say carnivine because carnivine has a task as a 
That gets a lot of points for being killed by a flying type move, so you might as well. And that's that. A little more cutscenes. So, I'm being targeted, so I can't warp. Uh, so it's important to just run away. I was gonna mine this uh, ore right here, just, you know, while I'm waiting to get untargeted, you might as well. Uh, but no, it's shaking. So if you haven't seen a Geodude ore yet, if you see any ores that are shaking in this area, there's a good chance that it's Geodude. Oh, another thing I should probably link in the description. I will, I'll link it in the description for all past parts and all future parts, including this one. And I got that one shaking too. Um, but I'll link the uh, interactive maps um, for that we use for speedrunning. So you can kind of get an idea where all of the encounters are and what the chances of each encounter are and stuff like that. Just just for your own you know curiosity and to help you with your speedrunning. So you're going to sit in this little hay field, grass, whatever, and you're going to feed these three Badoos in a circle. Throw, turn, throw, turn, throw, turn, come back to the first one. As soon as it starts eating, throw a ball at it. If you can, prioritize backstriking for a couple reasons. One, backstriking significantly increases the catch rate of any given encounter. And two, I believe you actually get more money depending on Pokemon number of Pokemon caught while uh, with a backstrike. I'm fairly certain at the very end of the day in the, you know, catch summary, it gives you a bonus of money based on how many are caught with backstrikes. I mean, I know that text appears there, but I would assume that that is because it helped with money. I don't know what other reason they would have put that there before, but didn't actually give you any more money. Anyways, I mentioned that if you had um, uh, two Stravies of the same gender, you should probably kill a Carnivine. I'm going to go ahead and do that now just to get it out of the way. And um, I'm actually planning on finishing Carnivine because I caught one. Um, so Carnivine... Uh, you can do a lot with it. You can do either catch one, stun two, uh, use strong acid spray, which we'll do later in the Ursuna fight. Um, there's a lot of things you could do. Just pull up the Ranger in the description below um, and type in Carnivine and just kind of click around with the tasks and see what, sh what you want to do. Um, I think the best way to do it is to um, catch one, stun two, and then use the strong acid spray. Um, and then I think if you get a large specimen, you can skip uh, killing Carnivine a second time. I'm gonna go for uh, I'm gonna go for a kill with Stravia. I'm just gonna use strong air slash or strong aerial ace and run away. Cause like I said, I need a third aerial ace. This is my third. And if you don't want to kill two Carnivine, you can just stun three. They, they all get stunned in this area with two spoiled apricorns. All right, so after this Kalaba cutscene, we're going to warp back to camp again. Um, if you did not get a Carnivine, you should heal in the tent for a little while. We'll talk to the tent and say rest just for a little while because you'll need to use Shinx as a sacrifice for the beginning of the Ursuna fight if you did not get a Carnivine. But anyways, otherwise, we're going up here. And uh, in this area, there's a lot of Paris. Uh, try not to deviate too far off the path, but if you see a Paris and can easily run behind it and hit it in the back with a ball, do so. My God, there was one to the left of me, but it wasn't worth going for. I thought this one was going to see me, but it didn't. So I ran behind it and hit it in the back with a, with a ball. And then if you jump up this ledge, pretty much just like how I did it, it's not picky at all. Um, you'll get up it. Otherwise, you'll have a little bit of trouble climbing up this area. You'll want to go ahead and pop a stealth spray here because we're going to be catching. Some, we're going to be attempting to catch some very, very, very high level Krakatoons, and their catch rates are going to be the best uh, whenever they're hit with unspotted backstrikes. And as well, Krakatoon has a double point task for being caught while unspotted. You'll need to catch at least three of these Krakatoons to finish it, uh, assuming you get both of the genders. But you can kind of tell if you're, you know, willing to put in some more mental work. It, this game's already super taxing to, like, think about uh, press X to switch to Pokemon, press X to go to the Pokeball, get behind it, throw the Pokeball. But if you can pay attention to their mustaches, the females have very short mustaches and the males have very long ones. 
And you can even see it in their little uh, profile shots. If I can get one. I can tell uh, this one is a female because I can actually see its entire mustache. Uh, the male's mustache will like droop down. Oh my gosh, you got, hold on, I gotta move it to be in frame. Or I'll just move me, hold on. Okay, so the cricket tune I could see here is female um, because I could see it's its entire mustache right here. The male's mustache will droop down like out of frame, but you can tell definitely based off the picture that you see. All right, let me move this back so it's not weird. There we go. You might as well have to catch combies. Um, just toss a ball at anything you see that can get in, as long as you're not sacrificing a ton of time to do so, because every Pokemon has a 20 point task for being caught once. So if you catch 10 random assorted things, that's like finishing an entire separate Pokemon, uh, entire separate Pokemon's research. And for a one-off throw that doesn't take very much time to do, it's definitely worth it. We're going to continue. Uh, the Stealth Spray only lasts for about a minute, so you definitely want to be speedy with this. I would recommend practicing this section just so you're confident in where you're going, um, so you don't have to use more Stealth Sprays than what is absolutely necessary. Yeah, still going to get behind other Cricketunes. I think this one saw me, I'm not sure. Um, but at this point, I have three. I think I caught one in Obsidian, actually, so that is where I got my third one. And then, uh, same thing as the Badoo, we're gonna feed in the circle here. Feed Patricio, feed Patricio, feed Patricio. You will either need to catch two of these or feed a fourth. I did catch two, but I wanted to feed the fourth just to kind of show you what that would look like. Um, you're not catching the Alpha, but the Alpha should be the one that you feed a fourth time, for sure. And as soon as the alpha starts eating, book it. Like that. Farm these apricorns. Uh, this rock will give you some iron. Farm this tree for hopa berries, which we already know already know are the crafting components for um for uh, stealth sprays. You can also farm that tree for apricorns as well. Uh, coming up with this jump I'm about to do. I'm about to jump across the lake like this. It's kind of tight. There's a bridge off this way if you want to just run across that and then come around this way. Uh, you can certainly do that. There's a bridge this way. I realize I got to show that where, <laughs> where you can see it on the screen. Um, but yeah. If you're comfortable with it, then you can definitely do it. Like I made the jump pretty easily. So if you, if you practice it, I'm certain you can do it pretty fine too. So I'm going to go ahead and pop another Stealth Spray, um, just so things around here are easier to catch. Uh, Krogunk is a very aggressive Pokemon, so if it sees you, it's just going to gonna get angry really quickly. Krogunk is not something we're really, we're, we are really planning on finishing. It's mainly just another one of those 20-point catches. And then here, our plan is to feed two Hippos. Uh, Shady, Shady Gamer X, the other um, top, the other, like, you know, my, my biggest competition <laughs> in this game. Um, he doesn't go here to feed. He goes actually, uh, this, is, uh, this player's not good. He goes right here to this grass patch because there's more hippos over here. There's two more. Um, and I actually would have appreciated doing that in this run because this hippo that I'm throwing the berry at right now just forgets how to eat. It forgets the concept of eating and it just plays a ring around the rosy. And it costs me dearly in this, uh, this recorded run. So ball, yeah, that, that's definitely how we eat, for sure. So they're all angry, and I'm trying to back this up. And I'm trying to find one that's not angry, and this fella over here, he's not getting with the program. <laughs> he's like, are we, what are we doing? <laughs> so this is my perfect candidate for getting my uh, backup feed. Yeah, there's a lot of chaos and stuff behind me, but I do have a stealth spray up, so this uh, hippo that I'm trying to get to eat shouldn't hear me. And he ate, so I'm out of here. I am absolutely out of here. Now, I did not finish Hippopotas. However, there are some Hippopotases in Coronet that you'll be able to get to back this up to finish it. Um, you should never expect to finish Hippo here. If you do, that's great. You know, feed two, catch three, unspotted, that's awesome. Um, 
but just know that it's not the end of the world if you don't finish it right here. All right, so a little bit of a cutscene. You want to be leading Carnivine here. And I mentioned earlier about uh, using Strong Acid Spray. Um, strong Acid Spray has a 100% chance to lower Ursuluna's defense. And also, it accomplishes two tasks on Carnivine. Strong Move and Acid Spray usage. All right, now we're just trying to die. I'm going to do Absorb just to give it some, some damage. I could have used Bite, because I think Carnivine has a task for Bite. Um, if you want to use bite, go ahead. Because I didn't even get to, <laughs> I didn't even get to do like the fast kill I wanted to do. I think if the barrel gets to level 23, it has a good chance of getting a double turn here. Um, but I did not get to 23, and obviously agile is not going to give me a second turn. So I decided to do regular water pulse, and then just do another regular water pulse afterwards. Presuming I live. If I don't live, I probably back up with like Stravia or something, air slash. It's not a big deal. Luckily, I did not die, and then we just water pulse again. I got some cutscenes here, and we're getting our Saluna. And then we're not done yet. Uh, the world record warps out and leaves, but we also get our Teddy Ursus earlier in a much more precarious spot. <laughs> so. Instead of warping out, we're going to go get our Teddy Ursus in the safe spot that are not influenced by an alpha nearby. Uh, these Teddy Ursus are much sweeter, much nicer. Um, you can pop a stealth here if you're having trouble getting into this grass, but it shouldn't be too hard. You just want to feed as many of them as possible and try to walk out with at least two. I threw this berry right there deliberately so that it would alert this one, but not this one. If they both run to that, it's really not a big deal because I ended up failing it anyway because I tried to throw like I wasn't even thinking and these two ran towards the same berry anyway, so it's not really a big deal. Yeah, I was going to I messed it up. <laughs> Fine. You only need to walk out of here with two. And the feeding is just a bonus. All right, now warp out, warp to camp. And then talk to the professor. We got a cutscene here. Uh, tell him your research. Make sure to scroll through the research. Make sure you know what you, what you have. And that's enough points to rank up. So return to the village. Warp back to the galaxy hall. And show Selene your research. Rank up. And then you're going to be tasked with going up to the commander's office again. This is going to be a very... <laughs> you're going to start to notice a trend about where you're supposed to go at all times. So Arizu's gone missing. I only need to warp back to go to the um, Crimson Mirelands to find it. The Pichu outbreak. Nice. Now, right here, if it is late evening slash night, sleep and make it morning because we're going to be going for some encounters on this day. And it's very important that it is not nighttime because when it's nighttime, they share spawns with Pokemon we don't want to see. So make sure it is at least day, midday, evening, just not night or about to become night. Just just if it's really getting dark, just make sure you said it's morning. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and come up here again just because I want some more spoiled apricorns. It's, once again, nothing wrong with having too many spoiled apricorns. You can also catch these Parises if you want with Pokeballs. I don't think they're that high leveled. Uh, you should be cautious around the Alpha. I just understand the mechanics of how they uh, of how they notice you and stuff like that to get around them easy. But do not do not hesitate to give them a wide berth because an Alpha knockdown loses you four seconds. Oh, and make sure you're picking up these Caster Ferns along the way. They're going to be very, very, very helpful for the next area. And then up here, uh, you'll just need to play with this uh, little little spot on the wall. It's not too precise. Uh, once you find it, you'll be stuck on it for a moment, so you'll have plenty of time to jump. All right, so we're going to be feeding three of these Tangelas, and you're going to see what I mean about <laughs> wishing I would have bought some more berries earlier. I'm, uh, I'm out of berries, and I'm now in my uh, raspberry stash. Oh, actually, you know what? Hold on. 
Hold on. When I was up here, since I was coming up here anyway, I definitely should have grabbed the raspberry tree. I don't know if I did. Yeah, definitely grab that raspberry tree that's like right behind me. Because you might as well. You're right there. That is three free raspberries at least. I don't think it was shaking, was it? Didn't look like it was shaking. Yeah, definitely make sure you grab that raspberry tree. Anyways. Uh, yeah, I had to feed some of my hard-earned raspberries to these tangalas, and those two actually wanted the same berry, so that sucks. I gotta wait for that other one to eat before that other one will s want another berry. Um, but yeah, just try to catch as many of them as you can. If, if you only get two, that's fine. Um, if you get three, that's great. And if you only get one or zero, then that's not good, and we'll need to correct that later. All right. So I talked to Rizu, finish the cutscene. And then we're going to be heading up to the Brava Arena. Uh, these little dismounts and then remounts I'm doing, it's not too tough. The idea behind it is just it's easier to land two feet up somewhere than it is four feet. <laughs> okay, and it's very important here that you tag the diamond settlement. If this... <laughs> I gotta move my face once again. If this diamond settlements banner does not appear, go back. Because this is gonna be a very important warp point later in the, or later in the game. Actually, never mind. This is all lords. You don't need to do that. Never mind. Forget what I'm saying. <laughs> Tag the diamond settlement or don't. If you plan on transitioning to any percent at some point, you might want to make this a habit though, because I'm just now realizing the diamond settlement warp is for any percent because there's a part after Avalog and after all lords is over that this warp is necessary so yeah do, do it if you want okay so here with Rhyhorn ideally we get stun three catch three um but one of them might break out in which case running back and stunning that one a fourth time will finish it it's either stun three catch three or stun four catch one so if one of them breaks out and you have to run back and stun it, it's done at that point. But you might as well catch it there, so yeah. I I waited to see. Alright. If it does that big long shake, then uh That means it has failed the first check. So it's worth, you know, making sure that got in. And uh I wanted to go ahead and check Carnivine there. See if it was done. God, I wish the left and right didn't back me up so far away. When I got off Weird Ear and pressed L, I could see Carnivine's research level equals 10. If Carnivine's research level is not 10, I would have chosen to stun it there. That's why I looked at it. I actually didn't look that closely whenever I was checking my research earlier. I decided to toss a ball at this Roselia, because why not? Um, there's a lot of leaf piles here, so make sure you are uh, grabbing these. There's a Paris right there, we need to catch more Parises. And um, just so you're aware, um, over this way, uh, there's a leaf pile right here that I'm about to grab. But if you go farther this way and fall down a ledge, um, there's some more leaf piles over here you can harvest if uh, you don't like your spoiled apricorn count. Uh, you'll want at least six going into the next area, six spoiled apricorns. But if you don't have that, yeah, right, right down here. Fall down this ledge, and then there's some more leaf piles right there. Yeah. Actually, not six. You want to have four. Sorry, not, not six, four. All right, so we're going to fight Lilligant. So the idea for Lilligant is that you want to just uh, throw, throw, throw. And then right here, she's going to jump. So I'm going to wait for her to jump, and I'm going to target her in the air, and then throw the bomb while she's coming down where she can't really avoid it. And then dive to dodge her landing splash. Do it again. Because she's always going to make a splash when she lands. Uh, something I'm about to forget in like 1.5 seconds. Alright. Um, yeah. Throw, 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 throw. She's going to do the same thing again. But now she's going to have a little bit of a charging wave that comes out. Um, you'll want to just dive over whenever you get a chance. 
Now she's going to do alpha sh her alpha shout. So we're going to back up and do some up throws just to tag the invulnerability once it's done. I think I got a few on there. Pretty good. Once again, target her once she's in the air, then dive to avoid her landing splash. You can practice this fight with a post-game file. Um, I don't think the rematches of these lords are perfect for one-to-one -one practice, like, you know, learning how long the fight is, because they do have extended health bars. But it is good for at least learning how the patterns work. And uh, you may notice that our GA dudes have gotten to level 25, and they are ready to evolve. They've just kind of been sitting there, and I haven't really addressed them yet. Um, they almost got to 26, so I feel like there's a good chance that your GA dudes get to evolve, uh, especially if you've withdrawn them when I have withdrawn them in this tutorial. Um, but if your GA dudes are not ready to evolve, you'll need to withdraw them at the beginning of core. Uh, you'll need to withdraw them at the beginning of Cobalt Coastlands. And then that's it. I'm going to go ahead and evolve those GA dudes. No warp to camp. And then that's it. Uh, you want to deposit your items. You're going to be given some items by Leon uh, right before the next area. Um, so deposit, once again, everything between Stealth Sprays and Pokeballs, except keep the Caster Ferns, because we'll need those to craft um, Scatterbangs in the next area. So definitely hold on to those. All right, that's good. And then you want to deposit everything, um, but take a really low level Startly. If you're done with Shinx, if you're not done with Shinx, uh, switch your Shinx out for a lower level one. Or actually, you can go ahead and evolve Shinx if you don't want to deal with the RNG. Um, yeah, I would recommend actually evolving Shinx here if you did not get three quick attacks. Only if you did not get three quick attacks. So, yeah. We're going to talk to the Professor, report our, uh, our catch results. And then that's going to be the end of this part. If you got any value out of this series, be sure to leave a like and subscribe and comment if you have any questions about this route or any mechanics at all. At the end of the series, I will be making a tips and tricks video as well as you know some other supplemental information that you may need to know when you're running this game. Because um, I'm realizing as I'm going through with this, there's a lot of things I'm just assuming people know. And um, it would really help, I think, to have like a basic technique video. Um... But yeah, see you guys in the next part, Cor uh, Cobalt's Coastlands. Bye-bye.